Hi, welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters. We're talking about low income agricultural rental housing in Hawaii uh, with Stevie Whalen, an old friend of mine from way back when. Uh, she has uh, been the executive director of the Hawaii Agricultural Research Center for a long time. And there has been a remarkable evolution with that organization. Welcome to the show, Stevie. Hey, thank you very much. Glad to be Can back. You? Yes, we, well, we have to follow what you're doing because what you're doing is very exciting and has all the prospect in the world. It's sort of a, a new project for a new time is what it is. So Stevie, tell us about the evolution of HARC, HARC. Okay, so HARC was the research arm of Hawaii um, Sugar Planners Association and we're what's left of, of the industry. And um, we were offered a piece of property by Campbell when they were selling out all their agricultural property uh, at the end of their trust. And um, it on that property had a hundred and some uh, housing units that Del Monte uh, Pineapples uh, workers lived in. And it had a bunch of warehouses and a chapel and a gym and a bunch of other extraneous uh, uh, buildings on it. And uh, Bert Hatton from Campbell, who was in charge of, of uh, getting rid of all their agricultural lands, he came to us and said, Do we, does he have a deal for us that they're gonna provide us with this if, um, and see what we could do to save um, the housing for agriculture workers. So it took me a little while to convince my board. I only had 30 days to do that because they had plantation housing and they knew that it was very difficult to manage and take care of and maintain because you have to maintain all the services, um, drinking water, wastewater, um, paving the roads, the whole business. So it is a, a small village on its own. And this particular one is in Cunia and it's quite isolated from anybody. We don't have bus service. Um, you certainly can't walk anywhere. The roads are too dangerous. And so anyway, um, we I thought very strongly that this was the right thing to do to save some low-income housing, land, ag housing um, for the ag workers that are on Oahu um, and specifically um, for central Oahu, which has a, a lot of agriculture, but it's not exclusive just for them. It's any ag worker on the island. Well, that's a long way from what you had been doing. I mean, from the time of Sugar Planter Association to HARC, uh, it was all about agricultural research um, now, now all of a sudden, a, a profound pivot, I'd say. Um, why, why did they come to you and why did you agree? Well, I think I said it, it was the right thing to do. Uh, agricultural workers tend to be the lowest paid on the uh, economic scale. And if the plantation had to provide housing for their workers, why aren't we thinking that we need housing for diversified agriculture? So, and this was, you know, essentially given to us, uh, um, um, not in the best shape. I mean, Del Monte had, knew they were leaving long before they left. And so the houses, the houses are some 60 to 80 years old and, um, and looked like it and lived in it like that. And so it, it, it's been an interesting task and I've learned lots of stuff um, that I never thought I would be even interested in. Um, I know as agriculture, we always don't like developers. <laughs> and so we have to be careful about that because that's what I am now. And <laughs> yeah, that's why they made you a developer. Right. I, guess, I guess they knew the kind of executive you were. They knew that you could follow through mm -hmm. and make it happen. And mm -hmm. so that was you know, one good reason to, to choose um, uh, HARC. That's nice of you to say that, but that's not the way I think. I think no, I was, it has to be yeah, though. I was it? there. <laughs> and, uh, and, and there's been so many, so many, so many people to help that, I mean, I didn't even know they existed before. They just come out of the woodwork. Uh, the, the people that helped develop our, our 82 unit project, which you have a picture of. Um, yeah, let's that, take a look. That is a nonprofit RCAC out of the mainland, hello? And they found us and said, hey, we'll help you develop. So you look at that and the ones that are, it's kind of an L shape there. The L goes from the left to the right. And then in the upper left-hand corner, there's a little square pocket there that wasn't developed. And behind those trees, 
there at the end, there's houses behind that, and that's not developed, and that's what we're working on now. But the 82 unit project um, was houses that were historic homes. So there's 45 historic homes that had to be essentially renovated. And then they allowed us to tear down some of the houses that were in, in the upper right hand uh, corner. There was a bunch of old houses there. We got to tear those down, and, and that corner has brand new construction. But they look the same, you know. Um, and of course, so, the now, historic now, this is this is you, you, there are two separate projects within this acreage, yeah. and you, uh, HRSC Hark, owns these this acreage in, in, in fee simple. Which we is did. really, I mean, that breathes new life into a uh, hark. I mean, uh, yeah. now you have a mission that lasts forever. Right. Uh, we don't own it. It's back up here. Hark doesn't own it anymore. Hark was given it, and then we created two organizations. The lawyers get into this, right? And so we created the Cunea Village Title Holding Company, which the name is such because IRS requires that. And it's a 501c2, not a 501c3. And it's a land holding company for Hark. So any proceeds goes to Hark. All right. And then we had to, because that's a 501c2 and nobody knows what those things are, and you get grants if you're a 501c3, we had to create a 501c3 Cunea Village Development Corporation. And that one is the one that has a 501c3 and it does all the development work. Okay. So they, now the, the housing and the purpose of these two companies are not exactly the same. Uh, can you can you you know distinguish them? Okay, so Hark is the parent, and its mission is research. And we had to change the mission a little bit to allow it to do some of the agriculture worker housing and, and training. And then it created two subsidiaries: the Cunea Village Title Holding Company to hold the land and uh, own it. It owns the land, but all the proceeds must go to Hark. Mm -hmm. And then the title uh, Cunea Village Development Corporation is the one that can go and get grants. So can, that's the one that uh, partnered up with RCAC to get the tax investors and the uh, rural development USDA to put the money into fixing up 82 of the 135 units. How much does it cost to fix up all those units? Oh, I mean, that, that, you know, that is terrible. It was like uh, almost $450,000 a house. Oh, wow. Expensive. Exactly. Yeah. They put in new, they put in new water system, new, just for that unit. It's still hooked up to the old water system, but new water system, new sewage pipes. Of, um, that brings us to the story, but um, there are other 53 units we have a maintenance crew who used to work for Del Monte that now works for the company that we hire to do our maintenance and manage all the water systems. And they have, um, they're head by a master carpenter. And so they do repairs. So we're repairing the other 53 units, much cheaper than doing this whole big project thing. So that's what we're doing now and really, Interested if there's anybody, this is my pipe dream, that wanted to spend $150,000 or donate $150,000 to repair a house and bring it up to code. And we put their name on it and, you know, we tell them who lived in it. <laughs> so um, that's kind of a pipe dream. I kept thinking, why can't I get something like that? Well, anyway. they, when they watch this uh, video, you know, Stevie, they'll, they'll be knocking at your door. You know? I hope so. I hope so. Because <laughs> we need about 20 houses now fixed. And we need from 100 to 150 thousand dollars each to bring it up to code. Okay, so now one 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 part of the pro project is is uh, well the, the whole project is for low income agricultural housing for Hawaii. Yes, which is great because that's going to incentivize agriculture in Hawaii. That's going to allow for low income uh, housing, which is so housing is so critical. But it's different. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, the requirements for a person to qualify for housing in one project, that's different than the requirements in the other. Can you break that down for us? Okay, again, so for the federally funded and tax investor one, you, you can't make more than 60% of the average median income, which the county through HUD puts out every year. So every year you have to requalify, okay? And 
once you're in, you can't make more than 80%. But you, to get in, you can't make more than 60%. And then um, you only have to pay 30, people ask how much is the rent? Well, it doesn't make any difference because you only have to pay 30% of your income. And that also includes a, um, uh, utilities uh, allowance. So that's the federal project, 82 of them. The other 53 is we still want to keep it low income housing, but we go by the low in income housing percentage uh, numbers. And that goes from 30% to 140% of the average median income. Some of our retirees from Del Monte, because that was another thing that we committed to, was any of the retirees that were living in the, we would keep them and they would have a place forever until they died not oh, their that's children. really great yeah not a the life children. estate yeah <laughs> so yeah so, so uh, well i guess um um the uh, you know, the idea is to encourage agriculture but one of them you we, we discussed this before the show one in one of these projects you can be a farmer yourself and in the other project you would have to work for a farming organization that's Why the difference and what what is what difference does it make? Okay, so for the 82 unit project, the one that was recently renovated and is all really cool, that's USDA funded for 60 years. And that we have a loan. They, they don't give us money. We have a loan with them for 60 years. So one of their, and this is a national deal, uh, our requirements of, the, of their program for worker housing stipulates that you must be an agriculture worker. We tried very hard to get an exception to that and almost got there and then the administration changed and, and we didn't have that support again. But anyway, um, you cannot be a farmer. You have to work for somebody. The other side, the 53 units, we're a little broader because um, that's not funded by anybody. It's funded by us. So we use the rent we get to help uh, build new ones and do all the maintenance. Um, and if anybody wants to give us money, then that's what we use. Um, so that side, we still want to help the lowest people. So if we had two people and one was making, you know, is that 30%, uh, 60 percent of the AMI and another one was at 120, well, of course, we would give it to the one at 60 percent AMI. Uh, and they would pay less rent, but that's not our issue. This is not a for-profit organization. This is a help the agriculture's workers have a place, a nice place to live and not in a dump. And some of them, you know, some of them are living in containers without bath. You know, I mean, it's terrible with some things that are going on. Some of those people have actually come here and they're just so thankful they have a real house and yard. And I mean, it's just wonderful. But so that group, the 53, then they either are, they can be a farmer as long as their income is low. We don't want you know million dollar farmers in here. So if their income is low, that's fine. They can live here as well. If they're an ag worker, they can live here. If, they're, um, if they work on this 118 acres in any of the ag operations or any of the businesses, they can live there. Um, and it's just a little bit broader definition of the ag worker because the federal government has a you know, it's about two pages of what they consider an ag worker. And if we consider them an ag worker, they're working in some kind of agriculture related thing, then they can live in that side if they don't meet the definition of, of the um, federal government. But it's all about agriculture in any event. Everybody in the project is going to be connected in some way with agriculture, thus, thus incentivizing agriculture in Hawaii. This is perfect. So you're, both of the organizations are Tax, uh, tax exempt, right? They're nonprofits under the Internal Revenue Code. Uh, All of our organizations are, yes. Yeah. Does that now is this sustainable? I mean, can you pay your bills from the revenue you get? Okay, so the housing we try not to make money on. We just try to make sure that it can pay its own bills, like the maintenance work and the rest of it, and building new, you know, repairing some of them. Uh, which most of the time there's not enough money for that. So we have borrowed money actually to do repair, to do the renovations or repairs of the units that are not livable at the present time. Okay. And so we, we have to pay off that loan. And then we had the commercial area, the warehouses, and they weren't occupied at the time. But since we took over in 2009, we've gotten them 
at, at some point they were 100% occupied. Now they're not quite maybe uh, 80 to 90% occupied. Mm -hmm. And the income from that then goes to support HARC because it's a nonprofit research and who, who supports that? The sugar industry supported before, but nobody does now. So it goes to that and it goes to helping maintain this property. So that's how in, we keep going. In a way, this is a natural uh, transition for you mm -hmm. because we, we don't have sugar planters type you know, community out there. Um, and the research community you know, isn't what it was. And now this is a sort of a perfect uh, evolution, a, a yeah. perfect situation for you. You've been, you, you, opportunity has knocked on your door and you've accepted it and, and, and for the benefit of everybody involved. Uh, why, don't, why don't we uh, take a look at some other photos so we can flesh out what's, what's happening for you, okay? Okay, all right. So this is the, the, my big project right now is to get the gym up to code and electrical sense. And it's not now, and I'm always worried about a fire there because we are using it. So this is part of the bad conditions and you can go to the next slide. So this is actually the, the center of all the power and a lot of it's, all of it's painted, all of it's very old. They just don't even make things like this anymore. When I bring people in there, they go, are you kidding me? Okay, so this is the gym and those pieces that you were shown before are part of it. One was in the outside and one of them is in, one of, in the women's bathroom. Is where all the power is. This is in the gym looking towards the front door, which is underneath the, um, oh, can I do that? That's cool. Underneath the uh, basketball rim. And up here is an exciting area. It's a loft. And up there is where we have um, a foosball machine that was purchased for us by Hana Rum. And it has, uh, uh, what's the other, air hockey. And it has a basketball deal. It has all kinds of books. And now we have two computers. And we have a lounge area for the kids and all kinds of Legos and toys and stuff for them to come and play with after school. Because some of them come home to nobody, right? We want to make this an area they can come home. Somebody can help them with their um, uh, Jordan from the uh, Havamana. will help them with their, with their homework and, and have a place to come that's comfortable. So the next one. The next slide is the other side of the gym, and that's the stage. So it's a wonderful gym. On the, I didn't put in the picture where the two sides, on the left and right, there's two elevated small uh, stages where people can sit and watch, or we can have other activities. And behind here, this is a women's bathroom, men's bathroom, and behind that are two rooms like dressing rooms and stuff that we could you know, put on plays or whatever, that kind of thing. So it's a wonderful, building if you put on the next slide hopefully it's the christmas party so we have events for the community there and that just shows one of them um, in the uh, in the gym there so uh, this one's facing the loft before um, island palms community helped us fix up the loft by putting an extra railing on the top even though they said this was up to code it was to me i said yeah we're gonna have teenagers up here and they're gonna be forcing around and stuff i wanted it higher so they just put a barrier that made it higher. Um, so they, they, and they fixed the floor and they painted it and they painted our bathrooms and stuff all on their community days. They fixed our broken windows. So they've done a whole lot of stuff up here for us. So this year for Christmas, if anybody wants to donate, we, are, we can't have this because of COVID. So we're getting trailers and trucks and we're gonna do like a parade that would just be us, our staff and the people that help us here. Um, and we'll give out food packages and toys specific for the kids with their name on it to each unit. And we're really excited about that. And that's gonna be on December 17th. And we'll go door to door to make those deliveries. So that's gonna be cool this year. So we have all kinds of events. So this, we started the very first year we were up here and this is residents and they're the ag companies in this whole area and any of the vendors or any that wanna help and here we're planting trees and we actually push back a berm so there'd be a walkway so that people don't have to walk on the road. That's the only place they could walk. And so we have two of these events every year. Of course, this year we couldn't have any, but what we do is um, landscaping, paint our, uh, our uh, rocks yellow so people don't run off the road because we have no, we have no lights. Um, we have no street lights because they were taken down when the new project came in because they didn't meet code, so they wouldn't put them back. 
Um, and actually, we have a solution that that's formulated in another new set of partners that you know I can talk about later if you want. But anyway, this is the community days, and we'll have our next one in April. They usually April and October, and um, so we're you know very excited about trying to pull. And this is what the, uh, one of the renovated houses looks like inside. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is they're beautiful. Some of these that's very nice, yeah. Some of these people who come to live here came from containers or shacks or whatever. And this is what they come to. And they're so appreciative. Now, it's exciting. Now, they can stay too. I mean, as long as they're associated with the agricultural community, yep. they can stay even right. for life even. Yeah. Well, we're trying to work on that. <laughs> so we really want to try to figure out how to get a retirement area on the property because if everybody retires and we have no place for active workers <laughs> good point yeah. so we, you know that's a little bit way off so we'll deal with that later but we're not we're still thinking about how we're going to deal with that yeah so. okay well i, I want to ask you uh, you know you showed pictures of the gym and it reminds me of a comment you made before the show about um a show we had only a couple of days ago with hapamana yeah. and jordan conley and uh, and peter hoffenberg can you talk about their connection with uh, your project and that gym Okay, so Kunia Country Farms and, and the Kahana Rum, their owners are Jason Brand and Robert um, Dawson. And they knew this Danny guy I mentioned before, Danny Mahea, about the sand courts. And then he knew Jordan. And um, that led us to Jordan. And we were so excited about him because he actually had clinics once a month, free to kids, Saturday and Sunday, free lunch free water, free jerseys, free everything. I mean, it was so great. We were having that every month, of course, before COVID. Um, but he's still a partner and he's still working on this and how to you know, do more of it. And, and another partner I think I mentioned is IPA, the, the, the school. And they didn't have one of the people that came to our community day um, saw his daughter went to that school and they don't have a gym and we had a gym not being used. So they put us together. So now we have a partnership with them and they come and use the gym for practice because all their games are in gyms and all they have is outdoor facilities. So that's worked out. And then they help clean. And whenever we have volunteers day, they're all part of it. And then the third partner there, so the school and Danny, that's three, the three of them. Yeah. So they're all three partners and we just all work together working on trying to improve this place. And then, the other thing we're working on is there's a little building right next to the gym. We want to turn that into a exercise weight room area. That's another little vision that's down the road. So. Well, I get I get the, uh, the sense of it. This is this is um, uh, you know a, a community. Um, yes. Uh, and there's a lot of people involved, mm -hmm. and you you're the hub of a, a wheel that goes in many directions with many kinds of people who either live there who help you build it out, who can contribute money, who connect with government for you. I mean, it sounds like a, a pretty ambitious enterprise to keep it all in place. Uh, and you have contractors. You have contractors who you said maintain. You told me you have contractors who act as property managers. This is a major episode out there, isn't it? Yeah, and those contractors, they're all part of the family. They are so helpful. They help in everything. Every event we have, you know, if we have a problem, some of those contractors live here, the workers, and if we have a problem in the middle of the night, they're out there. Or a water break, they're out there. How you know how long it takes you to get somebody to come to your property, especially like us. But they they do all that kind of stuff for us. It's just it's a great family to be a part of. What's the future of it? I mean, you're you're just sort of getting it all together now. But how do you see it unfolding in the future? Okay, well, I hope that once we get all the houses that we have repaired, and Filled, that we have a waiting list so that we can go to phase three because with the county we came up with three four phases first phase was the 82 units done second phase is fixing up all the other 53 were in progress third phase was do an infill because when del monte was here they would demolish a house here there everywhere so those are empty lots but they all will have infrastructure so that's the first place to put a new house and then the fourth, once we would do that, then the fourth phase would be another spot on the property to build a little development of houses, whatever. 
And so can we can go up to 200. So right now though, my goals are, okay, drinking water, our, our storage site was off site, it's not on our property. We have an easement to it. It's a giant swimming pool with a cover. I mean, not, not really like that, but that's really the thing. It's concrete in the ground with a wood cover. And so we just now, two weeks ago, got the 250,000 gallon, I think, tanks on our property. So the storage now is on our property. And, um, and we're getting new distribution lines to the other 53 units and the commercial area. And the, the state, God, is paying for that through a grant and aid and through a program that the EPA pays or gives the state money for to fix up the drinking water systems. And then we're going after uh, wastewater treatment plants. We have our own plant here too, to upgrade that. And we're doing that through USDA um, rural development funds. That'll probably take us three to five years. Those are the two. Must be busier than a mad hatter. Uh, I have lots of help. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, looking, looking at it, um, you know, sort of in a community way, the idea here, certainly by Campbell and by you, uh, was to incentivize and help and make a, a better life, if you will, for those involved in the agricultural community. Yes. So query, is it doing that now? And in the future, will it do that? And what long-term effect will it have on the agricultural community? Because we do need agriculture in this state as a matter of sustainability, resilience, and so forth. Yeah. So it supports people that work in ag to live a life like the rest of the people. They don't have to live with their parents and, you know, and raise their families. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it tends to be putting people really close together, and which is the problem we're having with COVID, right? But it gives them their independence and have a nice, uh, habitat with their nice yard and I mean it's beautiful up here it's quiet it's just I'm I'm actually staying at somebody's house now I'm babysitting their dogs and it's so quiet peaceful you know and just be able to experience you know your own place yeah there's one person I know here that actually he said this is the first time he's ever had his own place well, I think it's very, it's very appealing to people and uh, they'll, they'll be lining up for miles around. And the question is, uh, when you reach capacity, is there a, a possibility of, of expanding it beyond, you know, the original acreage? Well, that's right. So not the original acres, but on this acres, we can go up to 200 homes and we only have 135 now. So you have room. We have room. That's great. Yeah. So, so Stevie, what would you, what would you leave with our, our viewers? You know, what would you like them to take away from this discussion? What should they be remembering about this really interesting, maybe unprecedented agricultural rental housing program? So for me personally, you know, it's been a very interesting and exciting and rewarding and something I never thought I'd ever do. And I'm, I'm working with a lot of giving and loving and sharing people. So that, that I would never have met before. And I'm continuing to meet new ones. Like I said, we just had a whole bunch of free electrical work done here, put in all LED lights. They're going to help us with the street lights. And, you know, they worked on the state programs to help us do this for our community. So it's just so rewarding to be able to work with all these people. I mean, and it's not me, it's people coming to help this community. And that's what's great. It is great. And it's great for you, though. It's great to see you so involved, so active, so committed in a great, great new project that benefits everybody it touches. Thank, thank you so much, Stevie Whalen. Really appreciate you. you coming on. Okay. Aloha. Have a good day.